My name is Chris Revenberg. I'm an attorney and the author of the ADA book. I'm also the founder of Accessible.org so that I can efficiently provide a transcript and closed captions. I will read from the transcript itself. Several important updates to the legal landscape surrounding digital accessibility have occurred in 2022. In this video, I will focus on three updates that will cause litigation to slow. First, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, New York is in the Second Circuit, held that a plaintiff has to show quote unquote concrete and quote unquote particularized harm has resulted from visiting an allegedly inaccessible website. The effect will be that plaintiffs will have to put in much more effort to establish standing. Second, the California Court of Appeals ruled that websites by themselves are not public accommodations under the ADA, which means that online only businesses cannot be successfully sued in California state or federal court. Note that websites connected to a physical location are still susceptible. Also of note, law enforcement Law enforcement officials have taken action against two serial plaintiffs law firms in California. One lawyer who was notorious for sending demand letters <clears throat> has been charged by the San Francisco District Attorney's Office with 14 counts of grand theft by false pretense. Another law firm engaged in serial litigation has had a civil lawsuit brought against it by the Los Angeles and San Francisco District Attorneys. The reason the ad First, plaintiff rulings are so important is, be, is that they took place in the Ninth and Second Circuits, which include California and New York, respectively. These two states are by far the most litigious when it comes to website accessibility. That doesn't mean that lawsuits and demand letters concerning website accessibility are anything of the past, but it does mean that one, it will be more difficult to file a complaint, two, less businesses will be targeted, and three, plaintiffs lawyers need to weigh the risk of sanctions and other more severe penalties uh, before initiating litigation. On that note, I do believe each bullet will affect subsequent actions in other jurisdictions. For example, if the Second Circuit is putting a stop to quote unquote tester type claims, then it's very conceivable that other jurisdictions will follow suit. Also, when other lawyers find out that their peers in other states are being prosecuted criminally and civil lawsuits are being initiated against them, they might decide to ease out of website accessibility litigation. It's very disappointing that it took courts this long to put measures in place to, to stop the chicanery, but it looks like courts have finally figured out that the antics that include templated filings are making a mockery of the legal system and cannot continue. According to Safar Shaw's data on adatitle3.com, the number of federal filings has already dropped 22% from mid-year in 2021. Most signs point to a continued decline. To be clear, this news doesn't mean that website accessibility lawsuits are done, but we will see less of them and defense attorneys will have better leverage when defending or settling claims. Credit to Safar Shaw's ADA Title III blog for providing excellent information on recent filings and rulings that I carry forward in this uh, in, the, in the legal updates. Um, if you would like help with an audit or a mediation, you can find, find out more about accessibility services at accessible.org. Furthermore, I highly recommend you read the ADA book. The ADA book is quick and to the point and helps everyone understand the legal landscape and different elements in play when making a website or other asset accessible. Links to both resources and my contact information are provided below.